Hello and welcome to the Thursday, January 12, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. You may have heard of the CISA Known Exploited Vulnerabilities Catalog or KEB Catalog. This is a catalog of vulnerabilities uh, which are known to be currently exploited and CISA publishes it of course uh, with its main focus on federal government to basically set guidelines as to what vulnerabilities to prioritize when patching but the list is of course uh, very useful for anybody else trying to find uh, very risky systems in your network. Problem is that in particular small business and such don't necessarily may have the tools uh, to scan your network for uh, these of vulnerabilities. So Jan went ahead and said, hey, uh, Shodan already is detecting 44 out of the 870 vulnerabilities in the KEV catalog. Uh, why not let Shodan do uh, to work? And uh, Jan adopted his triop uh, tool to automatically query uh, Shodan for a particular IP address range to see if it detected any of these your systems being vulnerable to one of these 44 vulnerabilities. Now, 44 out of 870 may not sound like a huge number, but remember, if uh, Shodan can detect them, uh, then probably a lot of attackers can detect them as well. So these are certainly the low-hanging fruit and uh, out of these 870 high-priority vulnerabilities, the highest high-priority vulnerabilities that you certainly need to address uh, quickly. The tool that Jan wrote, uh, TriOps, is available via GitHub and more details and examples and how to use it uh, can be found in today's diary. And remember, just before uh, the holidays, we had this uh, vulnerability in the KSMB D kernel module in Linux. Uh, well, back then, myself and others asked whether it's a great idea to really have SMB in the kernel instead of what we used to have in user space. Turns out the uh, yeah, it probably wasn't such a great idea because we do have a second vulnerability again in the uh, KSMB D uh, daemon. This one actually affects uh, current versions. A proof of concept exploit is out, but it's only a denial of service vulnerability where a single packet uh, would uh, crash the system. Ubuntu uh, 2004 and 2204 are vulnerable to this. A uh, patch is available but is awaiting as of the publication of uh, this particular vulnerability is awaiting uh, merging. So it may have been released by now. The vulnerability including a proof of concept exploit showing how you can actually exploit this vulnerability Vulnerability. It was released a week of, from today, so on uh, Wednesday, January 4th, and uh, kind of uh, missed back then. So certainly something that you need to keep watching. I don't recommend you're using a KSMBD in a production and uh, definitely always a bad idea uh, to expose port 445 for SMB traffic to the world. And then we got uh, new vulnerabilities in uh, Cisco equipment, in particular in Cisco's small uh, business uh, routers. Uh, there are two vulnerabilities here uh, that uh, were disclosed. One is a uh, authentication bypass a vulnerability that allows an attacker to gain admin access uh, to a router without authenticating. The second one uh, then allows an attacker to actually execute arbitrary commands on the device after they are authenticated. The problem here is that uh, this vulnerability affects uh, some of uh, these RV series small business routers that are no longer supported by Cisco. Now, uh, to uh, be fair to Cisco here, I believe uh, some of them were last sold in 2016. So if you still have some of them sitting around, it's probably a time uh, to upgrade the hardware. If you still think that they're good enough, uh, you can block access uh, to uh, the admin interface. You need to block two ports in order to accomplish this. And one port, of course, 443, the HTTPS port, but you also need to block port 60443, which also exposes the admin interface. 
And then we got the miscellaneous vulnerabilities updates for Zoom that uh, fixes a couple of approach escalation vulnerabilities in particular on Mac OS. And secondly, VLC, the open source video player, is apparently being used to attack some healthcare organization and install Cobalt Strike. The attacks are being attributed to the good kit malware. VLC is one of those tools that you often find installed, but it's often not well managed, often also because it's installed by users themselves just to be able to view particular video file formats. And I'm actually not terribly surprised in particular healthcare organizations are being uh, targeted by this because uh, that's sort of one spot where you often have some odd uh, image uh, video file formats where uh, VLC may be actually a tool that is able to play some of these more specific healthcare style file formats. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.